is what's in the shot. Okay, what is actually in the shot? What are you, when you say give me a flu vaccine, what does that really mean? What are the ingredients? What are the adjuvant agents? What are the things that are in that shot that, um, that I'm going to be injecting directly into my body? Like we should all understand and know very, very well what those things are. So again, why are we wanting to know this information? Because we want to have an intelligent conversation so that we know exactly what it is that we're putting in our body and how it could potentially affect us, good or bad. Okay. Uh, somebody, Linda says, why do they push it so much? Any kickbacks? Um, you know, I, I don't know what you mean by kickbacks. I know that again, like I said earlier, a lot of the a lot of the stores push it because they're billing uh, they're billing people's insurance. Um, Yeah, so a lot of you are just saying that you asked that you did have that conversation and your doctor didn't know. So what's in the flu shot? There are a number of different things within flu shots. Um, I would argue some of them um, not something I'd want to inject in my body. And so let's talk about those things. One of them, one of the ingredients is the virus itself. So we have these viruses. In some cases, they're live viruses. And this is one of the reasons actually when I worked in a family practice um, going through graduate school, this is one of the things we commonly saw was when people would come in and get their flu shot, they would be back a week or two weeks later through sometimes three weeks later with the flu. And that was always, that was where really my mind, it sparked the question, well, wait a second, they came in to prevent it and now here they are with it. That just seemed a little bit strange to me. If we're, if we're saying that this thing works to prevent the flu, why are these people coming back in with it when before they were perfectly healthy and didn't have a problem? And one of the reasons that happens is because, yes, you're putting the virus in the body. Number two, one of the ingredients involved in flu shots is egg-based. Now, the reason I mentioned that, you're saying eggs are healthy. Eggs, there's nothing wrong with eggs. Egg is one of the top eight allergens in the world, meaning that of all the allergens that are required to be labeled on a food label, egg is one of those. And many people are allergic to it. And this is where I would argue, I said the children under two, we said because they're considered immunocompromised, and it's not that they're immunocompromised, it may be that their immune systems haven't fully developed, but they're not compromised. They've got, if they're breastfeeding and they're eating right and they're being taken care of by their parents, they've got lots of extra immunity from mom's breast milk. But under two, egg. Very top allergen, and a lot of kids, and I'm not talking about an anaphylactic type of reaction where, you know, when you eat something and your lips swell and your throat constricts and you break out in hives. I'm talking about a kind of a more subtle type of allergic response, and, and that subtle type is that it doesn't put you in the hospital, but it still creates an inflammatory process. Well, many kids are allergic to eggs. It's one of the most common allergens in the world. How many of you who've ever taken your kids into the doctor where the doctor said it's time for little Johnny or little Betty's flu shot, right? where the doctor said, but before we do it, I want to test you for an egg allergy just to make sure that we don't create a problem while we're trying to help, right? How many of you have ever had that? If you've ever had that conversation with your doctor where your doctor said, you know what, preemptively, let's test you for egg allergy before you, we inject you with something with egg-based ingredients. If you've had that conversation and your doctor did say that, type in number five into your feed. I want to see if anyone, and I've doubt, I doubt it because I've never heard of anyone having that conversation with their doctor where the doctor actually did the testing in children under two to rule out whether or not egg was going to be part of their problem. Now, there are a couple of other things um, in flu shots that I think we could argue are not healthy, and these predominantly are metals. One of them, one, and some flu shots contain thimerosal, which is a form of mercury, and some of them contain aluminum, which is another metal. Now, aluminum, in a number of studies, chronic aluminum exposure has been linked to dementia. It's been linked at, uh, to neurological disorders. Neurologic, so in essence, it's a neuro, it can be a neurological toxin. And keep that in mind, because I'm gonna come to something here in a minute that, that I'm gonna bring up, and I want you to remember, aluminum is a neurotoxin. So is mercury. Mercury is also a very well-established, very well-known neurotoxin. So we've got two types of metals that are used as adjuvants within these vaccines. Both are known to be neurotoxins. Now, that brings me, and I'm going to bypass some of the other ingredients for just a minute because I want to pose the third question over here, which is what are... 
the potential side effects, right? What are the dangers? What are the dangers of, or the downside, if you will, of getting a flu shot? Because if you don't know what those are, this isn't. This is where informed consent. This again is that this conversation does it work? How often does it work? What's in the shot, and what are the potential side effects? If the doctor's not willing to have those three questions answered for you, then either they don't know enough about the science behind vaccines, um, or they're avoiding those conversations because they don't have good answers to give you. At least that's my humble opinion on the matter. So, what are the potential side effects of injecting? metal in your body. Now, some would say nothing. That's all hype and that's all a junk science. And I would argue that there's a lot of really great science that shows that that's not true at all. And we're going to talk about some of that in a minute. One of the side effects, and this doesn't happen to everyone. Okay. So I, got, I want to be very clear. The side effects of a flu shot, you know, we have vaccine injuries and flu shot certainly does create many of them. And it's not that everybody who gets a flu shot ends up with these symptoms, but there are risks. And one of the risks is an illness. It's a neurological inflammatory autoimmune illness called Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS for short. And it's a very, very real consequence or side effect for some people of getting a flu shot. As a matter of fact, of the people that get GBS from the flu shot, one in 20 of them will actually die. Now that's a danger. In other words, that this shot doesn't come without risk. There is the potential risk for death. Now I'm not saying that that risk is one in 20. I'm saying that of the people that, that do develop a GBS reaction or response from a flu shot, one in 20 of those people will, get, will actually die. So again, there's still a risk. You've got to ask yourself, you walk into a doctor's office and you're completely healthy. Are you willing to risk injecting yourself with something that could create an inflammatory autoimmune disease that could potentially kill you? Um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You're healthy now, let's give you an injection and you'll be even healthier as we move forward, except for there's a risk, right? Now, some of the other risks involved with getting a flu shot, meningitis, so it can create a swelling or an inflammation of the brain. Another one of the risks, there's a risk for getting a, a, a flu shot is something called Asia. Now, Asia is an acronym that stands for Autoimmune Inflammatory Syndrome autoimmune inflammatory syndrome induced by adjuvants. Adjuvants are the substances in the vaccine that are not the virus. So, you know, the other substances in the vaccine, the metals are adjuvants. The egg is adjuvant. The polysorbate is an adjuvant, which is, by the way, polysorbate's another one of the ingredients down here that we could add to our list of vaccine-based ingredients. So polysorbate. And I test people all the time for polysorbate allergy and find many people actually are allergic to polysorbate. So again, that goes back to elderly and under two are being told to do it, you know, without question, but are they reactive? We don't know unless you test, right? You don't know unless you test. It doesn't make sense to inject yourself with something that you don't know whether or not you're going to have a reaction to. Another ingredient that uh, is found is formaldehyde. Now formaldehyde is, is classified as a carcinogen and, um, you know, why would we want to inject ourselves with something that's a, that's a potential carcinogen? That doesn't make sense either. We're trying to avoid the flu, but we want to inject ourselves with something that's a potential carcinogen. And again, it's, uh, and some people will say, well, it's just a flu shot. You just get it once a year. Yeah, but, you know, multiply it by 10 years and 15 years and 20 years. What are the effects of even low doses of these adjuvant agents? Well, we know that Asia is, is not a super uncommon problem. It's, it's common enough that we have enough research that backs up that this is actually one of the side effects of the flu vaccine. So you've got to ask yourself, are you willing to take that risk? And I, to me, that's part of informed consent is having that information in front of you so that, you know, you as an individual having a, an, an intelligent conversation with your doctor has the ability to make an intelligent decision about whether or not you want to move forward, you know, with, with, a, um, with a flu shot or not. Now, one of the other ingredients in the flu shot is antibiotics. Now we've talked a lot about antibiotics in the past on past uh, shows of Pick Dr. Osborne's Brain and antibiotics, many of you listening try to avoid them at all costs and one of, you know again one of the ingredients in the flu shot is an antibiotic so it's part of how they preserve the flu shots and, and so you gotta ask yourself do you want to inject yourself as well while you're getting that flu shot with the potential for putting, you know, an antibiotic in you. Now, another ingredient that's, that's commonly in, in flu shots is pork gelatin. 
And um, so some of you are allergic to pork but may not know, um, again, that you have a pork reaction, but pork gelatin. And some of you may be kosher or may be trying to avoid pork. And um, if you are and you're not being told that, then you're potentially... You know that you're potentially at odds with your religion, and that you know that's not that's not okay either. So again, these are some of the common ingredients within a vaccine. So we now we know what's in the shot, right? So we know does it work? Forty three percent of the time, do doctors get it? About seventy percent don't. Um, we know that under two, it's very common to have egg allergy, but no doctors are really testing for egg as a potential allergen reaction, even though. Um, even though they're, they're injecting it in anyway. And then we have, what are the potential side effects? Meningitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and Asia, which is again, auto-inflammatory syndrome induced by adjuvants. Now, on another note, one of the other side effects, okay, of the flu shot, which to me just puts the icing on the cake, is the flu. Um, so again, we go back to the beginning. If we're, if we're, getting this to prevent the flu and one of the side effects of it is the flu well, how do we win what is that where's the victory in in that uh, in that philosoph philosophical approach hey don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here make sure you hit subscribe below and as always thanks for tuning in